Recording in progress. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, we're going to do 9.3 for statistics today. It's fall of 2022. This is College of the Sequoias. We're doing 9.3. Uh, I do not have stuff for 9.3 up yet in assignments, but I will add it either tonight or tomorrow morning. Uh, 9.3 is basically on 9.1 and 2. 9.1 and 9.2, deciding which to use uh, when you're given a problem, what should you go about doing it? How, how should you choose? Do I use a proportion stat? Do I use a mean stat? We're going to go ahead and do it. Before I do that, though, I wanted to show you something that I got in the mail uh, this week. Uh, and so this was sent to me. It has my address on it. I'm in Tulare. I, I blacked that out. And it's about a screen-wise panel, and they want me to participate in a research study. And I haven't read it yet. Uh, the first thing I saw was this side. And I can't read that. I don't know the language very well. And I flipped it over, and I saw this side. And I found the dollar bill. The dollar bill is taped to it. Well, pasted to it. We talked about this in the beginning of the semester, how people will send uh, sometimes a dollar or two dollars as an incentive to check it out. Uh, and they're even saying, I'll receive a five dollar gift card if I take a look at it. And if I qualify, I'll get twenty dollars I can re redeem right away. Uh, so I might take a look at it for the buck. Yeah, I already got my interest for the buck. You know, I don't have to do anything to keep the buck, but... Uh, you're willing to give me money. I'm willing to take a look. So, we talked about people doing that in the beginning of the semester. I didn't have one to show you guys. I do now. <coughs> so today, we're looking at uh, 9.1. Or not 9.1. We're doing 9.3. And 9.3 is all about what should I use. Uh, so, do we go with proportions or means? So, this kind of, we get we get questions with two types of information in it. We will get questions that have uh, qualitative data. You know, like hair color, gender, stuff like that. Yes or no. Hell, we might see, uh, especially nowadays, I don't know if you guys are getting calls from uh, political parties and shit put on your doors every day, Republican, Democrats. Are you an adult or a minor greater than or equal to 21 or under 21? <coughs> so this is a yes or no kind of question. Yes, I'm greater than 21 or, you know, it's a category question. Even though it's got numbers, it's a category. Uh, so it's really any situation... Where part of the population matches what we're looking at. And the rest doesn't. See if this works any better. Is red work good? Red kind of looks like orange. 
I'll go back to blue. <coughs> so this is when we want to use population proportions. We're looking at p hat, which is x over n. The criteria we have when we have this we want n to be less than or equal to 5% of the population and we want n times p times 1 minus p to be greater than or equal to 10. And they will, the, the data comes to you a couple ways. Uh, this will either, either given to you as a proportion. You know, like a decimal or a percentage. Or they might give us number of successes and sample size. Where number of successes is X and sample size of course is X. If you need this up longer, let me know. I'm going to put it off to the side. I had told you uh, one type of data we get is qualitative. The other type of data that we get is quantitative. I guess I should say quantitative data or outcomes. Uh, they might give us a table or a column of numbers. They might give us summary data. Like X bar or S. Uh, or the, you know, like the mean, you. And that's, that's kind of like a giveaway. If they actually say mean, it's a giveaway. But otherwise, if they give us a table of column of numbers or summary data uh, like this, this is almost always uh, mean sample distribution. And so we had criteria for that. <coughs> uh, at this point, we had two, or so let me just say criteria. One, if n is greater than or equal to 30, 
This is like an auto win. Bingo, Yahtzee, whatever you want to call it. It means that the distribution is approximately normal. And that's what we're looking for. We want an approximately normal distribution. If that's not the case, it needs to either A, tell us that it is normally distributed, the population is normally, is normally distributed, Or B, we got to start testing stuff. Uh, we don't want, we, we want no outliers on a box plot. Something easy to do in StackCrunch. And we want our uh, correlation coefficient the R needs to be greater than the critical value. And we'll see that on a QQ plot. QQ plot we can get the correlation coefficient. Uh, and what we're looking for is the data is approximately linear. If those two are satisfied, then we're also good to go. Otherwise, we're shit of luck. We can't really work with it yet. <clears throat> Give you a little time to process that, and then we'll go on to the next part. Okay, if you need this longer, let me know. As a reminder, for proportions, Mu of P was P, and Sigma of P was P times 1 minus P over N. And then we take the square root of the whole thing. And for means, U of X is X bar.
And sigma is sigma over the square root of n. <laughs> okay, uh, let me open up something in StackRange real quick. So for confidence intervals, And proportion, we're going stats, proportion stats. Or a mean. We're going stats and t-stats. If we need T, which is not often, stats, calculators, T. And I told you, like in the 9.1 and 9.2, we want things to be normally distri distributed to use these confidence intervals. So I will show you how do these confidence intervals connect or compare to the normal probability model. Like I've been telling you, it requires normal, normal distributions, but why? And so we're gonna do that in some examples today. <laughs> and that's like the the it on the lecturing. We're gonna do some problems. We've got a homework chapter nine. I'm going to add one that says chapter nine review, which allows you to go in and test this 9.3 ID where, where you don't know what section the problem is from. Like when I do chapter nine and when I click on a question, I can see what section it's from. And that kind of gives away what we're doing. Like the question five, it says 9.1. 9.1 was on proportion. So it's a little bit of a giveaway.
Okay, let's take a look at doing this one. So this is question number five in the homework. Chapter nine. Uh, for me, it says they wanting 95% confidence interval. for population proportion. They're just flat out telling me. They give me X equals 40, N equals 200. <coughs> okay, they're not asking me to do it in this problem, but I should make sure we can do this. I need to make sure n is less than or equal to 0.05% of population. And here I just kind of have to assume it. They don't tell me the overall population, but 200 isn't very big. So if it's like the city of Tulare, 200 is definitely under 5%. Uh, so we'll assume that one. And then I'll actually look at we need to calculate n times p times 1 minus p. p is x over n, which is 40 over 200. So p should be 0 0.2. The way I got that so quickly is I divided the top and bottom by 20 by two and I got 20 over a hundred by dividing by two and 20 over a hundred. This gives me percentage when you have a denominator of a hundred it's percentage. So P equals 20% or 0 0.2. But you can pull out a calculator for it. So I need n times p, 200 times 0.2 times 1 minus 0.2. I want that to be greater than or equal to 10. Let's just verify that it is. I'm getting 32. So 32 is greater than or equal to 10. So we, we can do this. <coughs> so I've got my P is 0 0.2. For what I'm going to show you with the normal calculator, I need mu and sigma. So mu of P is just P, which is 0 0.2. Sigma P is P times 1 minus P divided by N, and we take the square root. So this is a calculator thing. 0 0.2 times 0 0.8 divided by 200. I've got the square root of 0 0.0008. And when I do that, square root of that, right over here. That's everything my calculator tells me. So you don't need to do this, the mu and the sigma, but I'm going to do it to show you where everything comes from. So we've shown with the, these two right here, we're assuming that we showed that to be true. We're, we're showing it's normally distributed. 
Let's go and get the confidence interval. That's what they're asking us to do, 95% confidence interval. So let's go do that. So it's a proportion one. So we're going to go stats, proportions. We got one sample and we with it, we have summary. We have 40 successes and 200 observations. And we're doing a 95% confidence interval. I click compute and I'm going to write my lower limit and upper limit over here on my page. Maybe I'll move this over. <laughs> okay, so I got it directly from the confidence interval doing stats, proportion stats, one sa sample with summary. Let me show you why we can do that. We showed that it was normally distributed, so let's use a normal calculator. I'm going to click on between. And I have mean and standard deviation right here. I'm going to put that in. And then I'm going to put it in as many decimal places as I can. We had, we wanted a 95% confidence interval. So 95% is 0.95. I'm going to put 0.95 over here. And I click compute and look at my boundaries. It says 0 0.1446, 0 0.2554. Isn't that just this rounded to four decimal places? So what the confidence interval program does in StackCrunch is you give it X, you give it N, it goes and calculates this shit for you. Then it comes over here and does... Oh, I have to use a mouse because that's not over here. Then it comes and does this, gets these values uh, with as many decimal places as it can get, and that's what it gives you. It does all the work of calculating the mean and standard deviation, and then setting it up, which is handy. But that's exactly why we're using the, uh, how the confidence interval thing connects to this, this idea of normal, normal distribution. And we can see it right there. Our values on the between part, when we do 95%, match. Why did you, stupid, stupid program. It wants three decimal places, so 0 0.145 and 0.255. Okay, this they will end up walking you through. I'm going to let you do that. <coughs>
Ready for some more? Oh, there's a couple of more white boys. Look at this. So here I'm doing question 18 in our homework. And it says... My 18 says a survey was conduct conducted that asked 965 people. So that's my sample is 965 people. How many books they had read in the past year? Results indicate that X bar is 15.7 and S is 17.5. Construct a 95% sampling distribution. Or confidence interval, sorry. Not 95, 96. Every once in a while they throw it off, throw it off for you. So we can do this in stack crunch. Uh, what am I doing? Mean. Two sample with summary, or one sample with summary. My sample mean was 15.7. Oops. My standard deviation was 17.5. My sample size was 965. I'm doing a confidence interval and it changes to 96%. And I am getting 16.8585. Let's see if we can reproduce this in the normal calculator. Did I do something wrong? Oh, you're right. Thanks, Caprice. So we had 15.7. And my standard deviation is 17.5. And we want 96%. And my values are way off. Why? Oh, I used S was 17.5. Why don't we come over here? Oh, wait, it's doing a T distribution, not necessarily Z. Uh, let's see what happens if I change that. What happens if I change this to point five six?
and do 96 percent there we go pretty close uh I used S, but S needs to be, we need to redo it to be uh, the old S. So sigma is S over square root of N. So 17.5 divided by the square root of 965 is 0 0.563. 344932. And when I did the 96% interval, now these are slightly off <coughs> because this is for a normal population. And this is for a T distribution. And they don't match up perfectly. But the higher N gets, the closer they get. But either way, you're not going to be doing this normal calculator when you do the homework. I just wanted to show you where it's coming from. They are doing the normal calculator work for us. So whenever we're doing a confidence interval, the statement we use, it has to say confidence. I don't know that I went over that in 9.1 and 9.2. That's a fail. I need to go over that. And I'll put the values they gave us. I'm going to use the ones up here. So those values. Uh, it says two decimal places. And I wonder if they went with two decimal places so that the normal calculator would match uh, the confidence interval and it didn't matter which way you did it. So before I go on, it's important to kind of note the way they put this sentence. Let me get rid of this part right here so I can write a little bit better. Those are the actual values that we had. So it says there is 96% confidence. Another way that sentences are commonly led are, we are 96% confident. It says kind of the same thing. That the population, I'm going to put it in blue here mean slash proportion and then we'll this is like a general sentence for confidence intervals we are 96 percent confidence that the population mean or proportion whichever one we're working with for and then like summarize give a summary of what the data is about.
So I'll underline that. That changes for each sentence. Is between the lower limit and the upper limit. That is a general sentence for any 96% confident interval. Notice they do that here. They have 96% confidence that the population mean, oops, let's undo that. that the population mean, that's this line right here, then it says number of books read, that's a summary of what the problem was about, it was about how many books they read in the past. So it's a summary of what they're talking about. And then it just says is between, and I put in the lower limit and the upper limit. <coughs> this is a, a general statement for confidence intervals. Uh, you will have on the final two confidence intervals, and I am expecting you to write something like this. There will be one for mean, and there will be one for proportion. We will review it when we get closer to the final, and I'll, I'll remind you of this. But that's how we state confidence. So this is on the final. In fact, I want to say it's 12% of the final. I've got two problems worth 6 and 8 problems worth 11. So 12 and 88 is 100. The confidence intervals are 6. The hypothesis tests are 11. There's 10 problems on the final. <clears throat> So, knowing how to do this sentence uh, is good. I'm going to go back and look at five. Will the sentence be there to like input what what goes there, or do we just have to completely come up with that sentence you on our own? You have to completely come up with that sentence on your own. It, and there's variations. Uh, the confidence interval is or the confidence interval for, there's the variations of doing it. If I were to do one for this one, I went back to number five real quick. Oh shit, they don't give us the topic. So let's say this is the proportion of students that ask questions in class. This is not a good example because those boundaries are way too high. I just made up what this proportion is about. Fiction. I, I, I came up with a, a reason for the question. Number five, I had 95% uh, confidence interval. And I had lower bound was 0.145 and upper bound was 0.255. So if I were to write this question, I would say we are 95% confident.
that the proportion of the population of students that ask questions in class is between you have a couple options uh, you can say 0.145 and 0.255 that's option one this isn't intuitive for a lot of people so if you also went with or is between 14.5 percent and 25.5 percent That would work too. This makes more sense to people. So when it comes to this question, it pretty much gives you everything you need to write out. Pulled directly from it. Yeah, because you're writing it. I was like, that's exactly what it's showing. Okay, that makes it simple for me. Thank you. <laughs> I got it, Mike. Uh, the only difference I would do on this other one For the, the mean proportion, let's go back and look at 18 again. It just has the number. I'm going to put it in right here. I'm going to say it is between 14.54 books and 16.86 books. because that's what the question was about. That the population mean for number of books read, and I'm pulling it directly from the question, number of books they had read in the last, in the past year, I wrote the color spelling for red, not the, and I should have a the in there, but I'm running out of space in the past year. So by adding books, the sentence makes sense. Oh shit. I got text in the way. We are 96% confident that the population mean for number of books. Uh, they had read in the past year is between 14.54 books and 16.86 books. That way, when you give like a, an item to the mean, it makes more sense. And just like the proportion, you turn it into percentages, it makes a little bit more sense. Maybe I can get these both on the screen at the same time. Nope. Yeah, maybe. Let's do the other order. No, that ain't gonna work. Oh, move the camera down. There we go. So you need to see both types of setups on the screen. And then we'll look at question 19 and we'll call it a wrap. Okay, you guys ready for another? Number 19. The following data represents the pH of rain. For a random sample of 12 rain dates. So these are dates. Nope. This is the pH on 12 dates. 
A normal probability plot suggests the data could come from a population that is normally distributed. They told me it's normally distributed, so I don't need to check. Uh, they also confirmed that a box plot indicates there are no outliers. So, so the box plot with no outliers and the probability plot saying that it, it could be normally distributed is enough for us to go with. We don't need to check uh, the criteria. So determine a point estimate for the population mean. So part A. point estimate for the mean. Population mean. Any ideas how I could do this? What did you say? Sorry, I missed it. Any idea how I can come up with a point estimate for the population mean? For mean, remember we have mu of x equals x bar. So, I could add these up by hand. Or I could load these in StatCrunch. Stats, summary, stats, columns. Just a reminder, we'll be starting a project soon. Uh, and remembering how to get to some of this shit is handy. It's been a while, but we can tell it to give us all sorts of shit. Uh, the mean's already on there, so I'm just going to click compute and I'll waste my time. And I'll, I'll write down the mean. You know what? I'm going to write down standard deviation as well while I'm here, just in case I need it. I don't think I do. And I can come back over here and say, that's what my mean is, 5.0. It says two decimal places. Now it wants us to do a 95% confidence interval. So we will come back over. We're going to go stats, T stats. Oh, wait, wait. I want that data. Because when we have the data, it gets a little bit easier. We're doing one sample with data. All I gotta do is tell what column it is. I don't need to enter any of this shit. When we have the actual data, that's what we can do. And I think they wanted 95%. Yeah. They wanted 95%. I just selected the column. And I'm getting 4.774 and a bunch of zeros. And then I'm getting 5.2693325. And since we're talking about without looking at the question where it prompts it, my statement of confidence would be, I know it was 95%. I got it listed right here. If you forget what you've done, this will tell you what confidence interval you're looking at.
This was on pH of rainwater. That the pH of rainwater in the town, state, I don't know, I don't remember where it took it, whatever it was, is between 4.774. I don't know that pH has units. I just think it's just a number. So I can't actually give it units here. And I'm going to change that a little bit. That the mean pH. Because the pH is going to change each day. If there's factory emissions that go up on the weekday, it's collecting in the rain particles. It's going to change the pH. But we're looking at the mean pH. <coughs> I don't know how they phrased the question, but it should be something like that. Uh... A says 95% probability. We don't want it to say probability. We want it to say confidence. And we shouldn't need to do repeated samples. Just doing one sample should be enough. We are doing 95% confidence that the population mean pH of rainwater is between how many decimal places do they want? Two. 4.77 and 5.27. Population rainwater doesn't. That's not a very good description, and I think they just did that because they didn't say where the data, the data was collected. <coughs> Generally, you want it to apply to what you're talking about. Now they want us to do a 99% confidence interval. That's easy. I can go back and uh, I can just edit this, say So I just edited it, or you could reopen it and restart again. Again, we're looking for confidence. Still two decimal places. So notice what happened at 95% and 99%. It was 4.77 to 5.27. And then when we did the 99%, the lower one is over here, 4.67. And the upper one's above it, 5.37. So the width has gone up. Why is that not showing? Oh, it's a drop down box. Okay. So what we've done is we're like trying to say where the pH is. Now, if the pH was right here, four point like six nine or seven two, the ninety five percent didn't capture it, but
but the 99% does. And why does it do it? We've included more numbers. We've included, by going from here to here, we've included four point, oh, shit, you can't see what I'm writing. Uh, so like, if, let's say the true pH is here. Uh, it's, it's outside the 95%, but it's inside the 99%. And what happened by going from the 95 to 99, We've included some more numbers. 4.677 to 4.77 has been included, as well as 5.27 to 5.37. We've got more numbers that it could be, that the actual pH could be. So we're more confident we hit it. If you really wanted to do it with probability, and a shithead one to do uh, for probability, we are 100% confident that the proportion is between zero and one, which is effectively zero percent and one hundred percent. No shit. Of course it's somewhere in there. Not helpful. So when we're doing these confidence intervals, what we have to weigh off is how confident do we want to be versus how big this range is? We, this is not a useful range. Zero to 100 is not useful. Not at all. Uh, so that's the trade-off. Uh, but what they were asking here, the width went up, so more numbers included. And it makes it more likely that we have the actual number. Because we don't know what the actual number is. And that's it. You guys got any questions? We'll call it a night early. Thursday will be a long day, but it's like... The first section is the long section. I can't really get it started today. And if you don't have any questions, have a good evening.